Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to create a user, how to assign different roles to the users and what are the different role types or different kinds of roles in Oracle Fusion Cloud. So first we'll start with uh, how to create a user. So let me log into Fusion. So this is how the, uh, the page looks whenever you log into Fusion. I have logged in as one of the user FAS12 student and I can click on this drop down. And uh, here you can see certain menus, but as far as uh, creating of the user is concerned, I need to go to something called security console. So click on this navigator, scroll down and then go to security console. Security console should be under tools. Click on security console. As I mentioned, I logged into this particular Fusion environment using FAS12.student. So this user has access to security console. So security console access can be given to the user through a role called IT security manager. So only those users who have access to IT security manager role will have access to security console. Now what I'll do is I'll try to create my own user and for the particular user, I will assign IT security manager. So IT security manager and application implementation consultant, these are the two critical roles which needs to be assigned for any implementation project. So application implementation consultant role will give access to FSM, which is your functional setup manager through which you can complete all your configurations. Similarly, your IT security manager role will give access to the security console through which we can create new users, create uh, new users, create custom roles and uh, uh, look at the seeded roles and also assign the roles to the users. So let me go to the user, add user account. So let me start with say Arvind Varabhanti, maybe this is my user, this is the user ID and then uh, password. Okay. Save and close. So my user is created. So now let me search for my user. Arvind.varaganti is the username. This is my first name last. This is my user ID. This is my first name last time. So when I entered my first name last time, system has automatically suggested username as my first name dot last name. And in order to, and if you want to reset the password, you can click on the reset the password. And if you want to assign the roles, click on edit, click on add role, and here search for the role. So in this case, as I mentioned, I just want to first add the critical roles application implementation. Application implementation consultant. Sorry, uh, here you can see uh, application implementation consultant. Uh, ignore this uh, copied one, but uh, you have again with an implementation consultant, you have two job roles. You can select any one of them, it doesn't matter. So I'm selecting this one. First one. Add role membership. So it's added, I can see here. And now let me add the IT security manager. Again, within IT security manager, I can see both with a different job, uh, with a different, uh, this is the name and this is the code. So let me pick up any one of them. And it is also required to assign your employee roles as well. Employee roles and abstract role. Now in a minute, I'll explain you what are job roles and abstract roles. So uh, employee role helps you in running uh, some of the reports and access certain self-service pages. So let me add employee role as well. And then, and see, you can see the three roles, whatever I've added is appearing here. Ampli 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 application implementation consultant, IT security manager, and employee role. Now I can click on save and close. So as soon as the roles are assigned to the user, uh, 
uh, it is required that we need to run a program or a job called retrieve latest LDAP uh, changes. So LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. This is basically to sync the uh, roles assigned to the users. Generally, in a live environment, this is scheduled to run after every couple of hours, but this being a testing environment, we need to run it manually. So basically, this is actually syncing the data behind the scenes. So let me click on done and then go to navigator and scroll down to the tools section. Under tools, you should be able to see scheduled process. Yeah, this is the scheduled process. So click on schedule processes and search for a job called retrieve latest schedule process retrieve latest LDAP changes retrieve latest LDAP changes the good thing in fusion is whenever you search for any job it gives the description of the job so it says this is a job which synchronizes users roles and role grants within the def with definitions in LDAP so click on OK. There are no parameters to be selected. Click on Submit. Job process ID ending with 693 was submitted. So you can click on Refresh here and check the status. It is ready. And then it starts running. So you should wait until it's uh, succeeded. Generally, this program takes a while. I'm not sure like how much time does it take in this test environment. But generally, in a live environment, it takes a while. So once this particular program is completed, we can log in as my user, and then we, uh, as a user, I should be able to see all those uh, the the functionalities related to all those uh, three roles. Okay, so now let me go into the different kinds of roles. So, okay, let me just okay. So basically, there are four different kinds of roles. So first, we'll start with job role. Job role represents the jobs that users perform in an organization. Example roles like general accountant, accounts payable manager, controller, financial analyst, warehouse manager, inventory manager, etc. These are all the different job roles. So Oracle has provided some seeded job roles. We can define our own custom job roles as well by copying the seeded job roles. Job roles can be assigned directly to the users. The next one is the abstract roles. So abstract roles represents the people in the organization independently of the jobs they perform. So example, your employee role, as I mentioned, employee role is required to uh, look at some self-service pages and to run some jobs. So employee role is one such example, and that's an abstract role. And transactional business intelligent worker role is another example of an abstract role. We can define our own custom abstract roles as well. Uh, abstract roles can be these roles uh, abstract roles can be assigned directly to the user so as we have seen i was able to assign employee role to my user and the next one is the duty role duty role represents the logical collection of privileges that grant access to the task that someone performs as part of a job example payables invoice creation payables payment creation etc these are all the different duty roles but uh Duty roles, sorry, it's a typo. Duty roles cannot be assigned directly to the users. Duty roles, uh, uh, we can define our own again, uh, custom uh, duty roles. Uh, job roles or abstract roles may inherit uh, the seeded or custom duty roles either directly or indirectly. But uh, so you, if you want, uh, the the duty role to be assigned to the user you cannot directly do that but duty role needs to be inherited into a job role and then job role can be assigned to a user and the last one is about the data roles again data roles are nothing but a job roles with access to specific ledger or bu these are mainly for compatibility for earlier versions of fusion data roles that is versions prior to release 11 and uh, after release 12 after fusion release 12 uh, oracle stopped uh, the data role functionality, but uh, still in some of the instances, you will be able to see uh, the data roles. Of course, data roles can be assigned directly to the uh, users. Now, I'll try to explain this a uh, little bit in a simpler way by comparing this with the EPS. So let me open a spreadsheet. So 
So in EBS, we have a concept of responsibility. Within that responsibility, we have a menu. And within the menu, we have a sub-menu. And within the sub-menu, we have the functions. So maybe we'll just take uh, AP as an example. So for AP, the uh, menu is say AP navigate GUI. That's the main menu for any AP responsibility. And maybe under this particular main main menu, we have sub-menu say uh, invoice. Maybe AP invoices. And within the sub-menu, we have a function say invoice entry. Invoice inquiry invoice batch and so on so coming to the fusion we do not have any concept of role uh, we do not have a concept of uh, responsibility we have only roles so job roles is kind of equivalent to menu but again uh, in the case of EBS, we cannot uh, assign menus directly to the users uh, you need to assign only the responsibilities but in fusion we can assign the job roles to the uh, users and uh, we have a duty role so job role is kind of a menu and duty role is kind of a sub menu as i mentioned we can assign the job roles to the user but we cannot assign the duty role similarly in ebs as well we cannot assign a sub menu to the user right so sub menu needs to be assigned to a main menu and only the main menu needs to be assigned to the responsibility responsibility can be assigned to the user uh, in fusion job roles can be assigned to the users duty roles cannot be assigned to the user if you want a duty role to be assigned to the user the only option is assign the duty role or inherit the duty role into a job role then assign the job role to the user but you cannot directly assign the duty role to the uh, users so inherit the uh, uh, inherit or include the duty role into job role and so the job role can be assigned to the user so job role can be equated to a main menu in a, an abs and duty role can be equated to a sub menu Thank you. Thanks for watching my video for interesting videos on Oracle Fusion Financials. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.